Hello everyone. My name is Susan Chan. I am a postdoctoral fellow in Dr. Carl Heisenstein's lab at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Today I'm going to share with you the work that I did during my PhD. I continue to work with this plant in my postdoctoral work too. I work with a special group of plants known as desiccation tolerant or resurrection plants. The plant that I work with is a, is a fern. It is an epiphytic fern called Cleopelchis polypodiides, also known as the resurrection fern. Generally, this fern is found on the branches of oak trees. In the absence of water, the fronds completely dry up and look as if they are, they are dead. But as soon as water becomes available in the form of rain, they rehydrate and turn green. Majority of the plants do not show this type of behavior. And just because it is so fascinating to watch the phenomenon and because this plant has not been well studied, I took it up as my PhD project. And my question is, how does Cleopeltis tolerate water stress? I answered this question by exploring different criteria, such as looking into the morphological characteristics, the transcriptional data, and the physiology of this plant. The morphological characteristic it started with a curious observation and it developed into a story that is published in Planta in 2017. If we look at the uh, fern blade of the front closely, Ventral surface is glabrous, but the dorsal side has several structures. There are these tiny structures that cover the entire front, and that is known as the peltate scales. Uh, there are stomates that are on the dorsal side, and there are sori that house the reproductive structure spores. I was very interested in understanding how does Cleopeltis absorb water? Is it from the front, or is it from the rhizome and the roots? And because it is not uh, well documented, I uh, went ahead and uh, used a creative way of introducing a hydrophilic dye called calcofluor. So I placed the frond into the calcofluor and uh, just uh, watched uh, the response uh, to see if the frond will hydrate. Interestingly, the dye spread it on the surface of the frond and uh, in the very short period the uh, uh, the entire dorsal side was stained with the hydrophilic dye and the frond began to hydrate too it takes about five hours for the frond to fully hydrate and after five hours i uh, see that the entire dorsal side is covered with this stain uh, on a closer examination i found that the peltate scales uh, were stained with this dye especially the wings of the peltate scale but the center of the uh, region of the uh, peltate scale did not uh, stain with the dye, suggesting that it is relat relatively more hydrophobic. This, these experiments and uh, some more, uh, I was able to clearly document that the peltate scales are involved in the absorption of the water. Uh, the, these graphs, the one that is on the left, represent the water uptake uh, from the front, uh, and uh, the one on the right represents the water uptake from the rhizome and the roots. And it clearly shows that in the presence of the scales, the water uptake is much higher through the front compared to that of the rhizomes. And uh, uh, when the scales are removed, the water uptake slows down significantly. Uh, as, and in fronts, it slows down after two hours uh, of hydration, whereas in the rhizome, the water uptake did not occur after one hour, which clearly showed that the tiny structures such as peltate scale play a huge role in the water management of Cleopeltis and therefore involved in the desiccation tolerance mechanisms of the fern. Next, I wanted to explore the molecular characteristic, molecular mechanisms of the desiccation tolerance. And I used de novo RNA-seq technology to understand uh, the transcriptional changes that occur at different hydration stages. I used a, a fully uh, hydrated front that had a relative water content of uh, uh, more than 95%. Uh, then I looked at the transcriptional uh, or transcription from a front that was partially dehydrated uh, that had a relative water content of less than of 50% uh, and uh, of and from a completely dehydrated prawn that had a relative water content of less than 10% after 72 hours. Uh, here is the enriched transcriptional uh, data differentially exp uh, expressed transcripts between the three hydration conditions. You can clearly see that the highest trans uh, expressed uh, 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 contexts are found in the hydrated stage. Uh, the 
percentage of the express trans transcripts greater than 50% were related uh, uh, to membrane stability or plasticity, protection, cell division, cell cycle, and defense response. And uh, those transcripts that were greater than 35%, the express transcripts are associated with photosynthesis, fatty acid biosynthesis, cell redox, antioxidative systems, post-transcriptional modification, secondary signaling. So all these mechanisms are associated with the adaptive, that facilitate adaptation of the fern to desiccation. Overall, the data suggests that the pleopeltis primes for desiccation at a very early stage of dehydration, at the hydrated stage itself. I'd like to uh, bring your attention to other process, some of these processes, such as the cell redox homeostasis, oxidative reduction uh, activity, and the uh, fatty acid biosynthesis, because these data jive with my biochemical analysis, which showed that perox uh, ROS, such as hydroperoxide and uh, lipid hydroperoxide, increase in the fern as it dehydrates, but decreases after rehydration. Antioxidative enzymes such as catalase decreases upon dehydration and increases after rehydration. Whereas the uh, glutathione uh, consuming enzymes in activity increases upon dehydration and decreases after rehydration. These data indi uh, clearly indicate that the oxidative and the antioxidative system is uh, sensitive to the hydration stages of the fern and is, uh, could, uh, is likely involved in the desiccation tolerance mechanism. Another component is the fatty acids. Uh, I see that uh, the unsaturated fatty acids such as linolenic and linoleic and saturated fatty acids such as palmitic and stearic acid increase when the fern dehydrates but decreases as the fern rehydrates, indicating that the fatty acids are likely involved in the cell wall modification process and therefore uh, play important role in the desiccation tolerance mechanism. These data are, uh, uh, are published in the Journal of Plant Physiology. And with this, I'd like to thank for everybody's attention. Thank you.